Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Living Color, and in this video, we are diving deeper into the importance of lighting, whether you are setting up a full scene or refining a portfolio piece like this one. This is a prop I recreated from Pixar Turning Red, and by breaking down how Pixar approaches lighting, we will use lights to direct attention to this piece and evoke the specific feeling. Here we have two lighting setups. The first one clearly shows the props, but they feel quite flat overall. And in the second example, we have the final render, which uses six lights to create more depth and mood. Let's break down the different types of lights we can use. We have the fill light, the key light, the rim, the kick, the set or backlight, and the desk lamp or practical light. If we combine all these together, here we see how it looks on a clay render, and the final pass with the shaders. Let's begin with the fill light. The fill light helps soften the contrast between highlights and shadows created by stronger lights. It fills in darker areas, creating a more balanced and natural look. Typically, the fill light is less intense than the key light and is placed on the opposite side or at an angle to reduce harsh shadows. In this case, I created a fill light with a dome light and I added a very soft HDRI image to use as a starting point and get an overall brightness in the scene. Then we have the key light. The key light is the main and most powerful light source in a scene shaping the subject and setting the overall tone. It creates the strongest highlights and the most defined shadows, giving depth and dimension to props or characters. Its placement determines how light and shadow interact, influencing the overall mood and visual impact of the scene. A well-placed key light enhances form and texture, while an unbalanced one can make the scene feel unnatural. In this scene, I'm setting up the key light at roughly 45 degrees to the left from the prop, increasing the exposure for quite a bit, to get a better idea of how the light will look. I'm adding some temperature to the light as well, but all these values will eventually be adjusted later on, once all the lights are in place. The third one is the rim light. The rim light is placed slightly behind on the opposite side of the key light. Its main role is to separate the subject from the background by adding a strong highlight around its edges, highlighting depth and definition. In this case, I position it on the right side of the scene and adjusted its color temperature to a cooler tone, in contrast to the key light, suggesting a nighttime setting where moonlight is streaming through the window. To create a crisp, well-defined rim light, I've increased its exposure and narrowed its spread, ensuring the highlight remains sharp and directional. Now that we have a solid lighting foundation in this scene, the next light that we'll be adding will be more focused on specific areas of the subject. But before we move forward, Let's take a look at some examples from the movie Turning Red. We will quickly break down a few frames from the film and identify how these lights are used to shape the scene, create mood and direct attention. In this first example of Maylin's room, we can see a cold rim light coming in from the window and bouncing into the desk. Then we have the practical light, which is the desk lamp, bouncing off the wall, over the desk and chair and reaching for the wooden floor. I think this is not only done with one light source, but it creates the illusion of having one light illuminating the entire desk. In this second example, the desk lamp acts as a key light, shining from above and bouncing off her notebook to illuminate her chin in a subtle way. The scene also uses the windows on both sides to create a cool blue-purple rim that outlines her silhouette, making her stand out from the background. There is a soft fill light filling in the room from bottom to top, and in the background we can spot additional practical lights integrated as room decorations. In this third example, which is a more dramatic moment of the movie, the practical light of the desk this time is not as strong as in the first example, but it takes a role of a rim light instead, and the entire shot relies more on the strength of the key light coming from the lamp that is out of frame on the left side. Coming back to the desk scene, let's have a look at the kick light. This light works similarly to the rim light, and it can be used to separate the subject from the background. However, instead of just creating an edge highlight, it emphasizes the subject's shape, since the subject here is very square, I place the kick light above, allowing most of it to fall over the top of the props. This placement clearly defines the edge of the desk and helps bring out the form of the chair, improving the readability of the subject. Next is a set light or backlight. This light is meant to affect the background more than the subject, creating separation by adding a layer of color contrast around it. It works well in a portfolio piece like this one, especially when using an infinite background, but it's important to note that it can feel unrealistic in a more grounded scene. For this setup, I use a point light and significantly increase the size, almost as big as the subject itself. I also boosted its intensity and exposure while giving it a very warm tone. 
The goal was to shift the blue background color around the desk, creating a stronger visual contrast that helps define the subject. And finally, we have practical lights, in this case, the desk lamp. These are visible light sources within the scene that serve both a functional and aesthetic role. They can include lamps, candles, neon signs, TV screens, or any other in-world lighting elements that contribute to the composition. As we saw before in the screenshots from the movie, practical lights help create a natural and believable atmosphere while also providing illumination that interacts with the subject and environment, adding depth and visual interest to the scene. Once all the lights are set up, I like to review them in the Arnold Lights Manager. This tool allows you to adjust the light parameters from a single panel, making final tweaks much more efficient. One of its best features is the ability to mute or solo individual lights, which helps when fine-tuning their impact on the scene. I also find it incredibly useful for comparing values like light intensity, color temperature, shadow density, and shadow color. One key observation from turning red is that the shadows are rarely pure black. Even though this is a stylus movie, the same principle applies in the real world. Shadows always carry some color, influenced by the surrounding light. When using warm lights, I tend to add deep orange or red tones to the shadows, while for cooler lights I incorporate shades of green, teal or dark blue. This not only makes the scene feel more natural, but also adds subtle color variations that makes the lighting more visually interesting. Now that we have the lights in place, this setup works great when showcasing multiple props together as a group. Let's say that you have a character to display or a character interacting with one of the props. In this case, you'll only need to make slight adjustments to the intensity and angles of some lights to accommodate the new elements. But instead of rebuilding the lighting from scratch for every piece, you are already 90% there. This keeps the process much more efficient while keeping a consistent look across all your projects. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope you picked up a thing or two from this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more 3D breakdowns, modeling videos and deep dives like this one. What you're seeing now is the full scene from a distance, with all the lights visible, key, fill, rim, kick, backlight and practical lights working together. I'll leave you with the final renders and their clay versions and I'll see you in the next video.